I am the founder of the Simon Law Group and also the co-founder of Justice HQ practice in California mostly, but have a national trial practice. And I do a shitload of spine injury cases. I decided to be a lawyer at like 12, 11 or 12. My uncle Terry was hit by a drunk driver, paralyzed. So he can't walk, can't earn for his family. And there was a lot of issues in the case. There was a seatbelt issue. So they're arguing comparative and things. And I saw his lawyer, you know, as a young kid, this person, one individual fight for him, like a scrapper. He was like an Italian little scrapper guy. But that settlement actually gave my cousins a quality of life. They built out a whole ranch style home for him with wheelchair lifts. But even more so, I have a twin brother, identical twin brother. Uh, my identical twin brother, he was born with severe scoliosis, bent over. When he was 12, they had to fuse his spine to, to put him upright. And he was in so much pain. I mean, I just, I lived that with him for a summer. I was seeing him click that button in the bed when he needed more narcotics and then to be weaned off of it and see what that's like and see what it's like 20 years from there, 25 years from there. So when I'm talking about adjacent segment disease, when you fuse somebody and what it's like, I know it. I know what my brother's going through now and how he has to manage it. For me to talk about what it's like for the client, I have to know it. And you could tell if you know it or not. You could tell if it's real when I'm talking about being somebody. So every trial that I do, I'm with them in their home. Because a lot of times, you know, you ask clients, hey, can you tell us what you're passionate about? Or can you give us some photos? But you don't get a sense for that unless you're in their home, in their safe space and see, because they don't, you know, they don't tell you a lot of those things. And then it, that's where it triggers for me. And not only that, but if you meet somebody in their home, it makes you a better advocate to fight for them. For it gives accountability to the lawyer, right? You broke bread with this person, you better be able to fight for them, right? But you get in there and you, you feel it, you smell it, you breathe that story. And if you do that, it's easy for you to communicate it, you know? Um, but that's why I make a point with all my trial lawyers, because we have a lot at our firm now, is you gotta beat the client. We have a checklist of stuff you gotta do. And that's like the first thing, before you even answer discovery. You gotta get in there and meet with them, see what makes them tick, produce what, because the cases can resolve. If you can communicate that effectively, different tone, different voice to insurance adjuster than a jury, but you gotta be able to meet with them and know that, that language. So I am 100% a student of the game, and they call it the practice of law for a reason, because you're practicing every day. And I, look man, I'm reading articles every day on spine surgeries or the new upcoming techniques and technology, because I think the more you are an expert in knowledge and stuff, the easier it is for you to like talk about it and teach it sometimes to other lawyers, sometimes to adjusters, and sometimes to a jury. So you gotta learn. Being the best lawyer, especially child lawyer, is knowing what you don't know. If you are not good at a specific thing, don't fucking do it. Specialize in what you wanna do, but taking your metaphor, like you talked about that coat of armor, that armor that you have, but why not just build an arsenal of weapons around that armor? You're rotating lawyers. You should always have one constant, in my opinion. It's there start to finish, and usually that person closes, but bring in the soldiers to slay. And if you're not good at it, if you're uncomfortable, let somebody else do it. But do not, do not practice on somebody else's livelihood. Do not do it.